Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Truth Podcast. My guest today is Jessica Brittany, and she is the founder of Calm and Colorful. She has been teaching in different settings since 2008. She is a certified, uh, she is certified as a mindfulness teacher, social emotional learning facilitator, kids life coach, and yoga instructor. She has been extensively trained on mindfulness-based approaches and engages in a, in a rigorous ongoing process of training and supervision. Jessica offers one-on-one -on -one online sessions for children and families. She travels to schools around the world, guiding classrooms to be more mindful. Lastly, she published an interactive coloring book that teaches breathing exercises to children. And we appreciate you coming on. Hello, Jessica. Hi, thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to be here with you. Me too. I just got through that like the, for the fourth time or whatever. So yeah, that was great. <laughs> did it! Yay! Yay we did it! <laughs> okay. So the first question I ask everybody on the show is what lit the fire for you to want to become an entrepreneur? What was it that, that turned that light switch on for you? Um, I've always, I don't know, I was never like a nine to five type person. <laughs> I always worked in the classrooms and I wasn't really a fan of the way the school system worked, but I wanted to still work with children in some way. So I was always told I could do whatever I want to do. So I created a title of mindfulness mentor and here I am. <laughs> that's awesome. No, it's not just a title. It's what you do. And I think that's important. You know, I think that you're a very, very good person. You have a very good heart for people and for children and kids. And I know that already because I got to talk to you for a little bit today and, and uh, got, to, got to really get to know you a little bit better. And so I know that, uh, that your heart is with, with the kids and trying to help them out. So I totally know that, letting everybody else know because they know me. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. So, um, go into a little bit about your story and tell us how you got to be where you're at today. So when I was 15, I was diagnosed with depression and um, I didn't, I was put on depression medicine and it made me worse. So I ended up just getting off of it. And then fast forward years later um, and lots of, not lots of, a couple yucky relationships with people didn't treat me the best that I didn't realize I deserved to be treated. Um, and re experienced depression after actually I traveled. Um, I volunteered to travel to Thailand and India to teach English and India was another trigger for me on setting off the depression. Just everything that I saw, my heart could not handle it very well. It was very heartbreaking and I felt like I couldn't do anything. Um, so I was put on depression medicine again, didn't really want that route. I'm a more holistic type person. Um, and then I just started teaching my, trying to figure out other ways to help um, myself from just feeling so yucky and not being wanting to get out of bed. And also the depression medicine gave me anxiety, which I never had. So daily anxiety. So that was a fun side effect. <laughs> um, <laughs> Put that on the label. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so dealing with that. And then um, I started teaching myself just the different, you know, changing my mindset. I read an amazing book called Mindset Switch. Um, the first book I read was The Power of Now. That was a huge one that really got me down this path of mindfulness. Um, I actually read that story when my dad, my dad had cancer for 18 years and he was given six months. And that during that time I was reading that book and I was on my way to the hospital and that book helped me like snap out of that yucky spiral of like, we're never going to be, we were at, I was visiting, um, picking up drama juice on the way, just a smoothie place to the hospital. And I was down this like yucky spiral of like, I'll never, you know, be here again with him and have his drama juice and blah, blah. And then I, because of that book, I was able to kind of switch my mindset and realize like, wait a second in this moment, I'm going to take us the drama juice. So I get to go still experience it with him and have, you know, enjoy it with him. And he's still here and to live in this moment right now, not 
the future when he's not here because right now he is here. So that was a really incredible, nice aha moment for me. Um, and I also had a little girl that I was close with when she was little. Um, she took her life when she was 13 and that affected me as well. Just the fact that I wish I, you know, was able to be there for her and do something. So, um, depression really helped me where I'm at today by building with, you know, my business and now all the coping school, coping schools, coping skills <laughs> that I taught myself, I now get to teach children and help them hopefully before they face depression is my goal. But this day and age, a lot of children already have depression or anxiety. So just trying to help them with those tools, um, get through different challenges in life. And I am off my depression medicine. So that's exciting. Yay. <laughs> Power of Now, for people who don't know, is written, written by Eckhart Tolle. Uh, I've actually read that book and um, there was another book by him I read as well. Um, and basically it focuses on being in this moment and what's past is already gone and what is future is not predicted yet. Basically, you don't know what's going to happen. So the only thing you can influence is now. Hope I said that right. <laughs> said it perfect. <laughs> so I mean, it's a good book and uh, I, I do recommend reading it. I really do. It can, it can really help with, uh, with uh, some of the things that we go through and challenges and putting it into a different context. It will really shift your mind if you allow, uh, you allow it to. Um, Okay, we talked about some of the struggles already, but um, along your, your journey, we've talked about a couple of things, but what other things held you back well, either internally or externally, you know, on your journey as an entrepreneur um, that kind of, you know, were roadblocks or obstacles or things that, that uh, like tried to stop you, that type of stuff? Um, myself. <laughs> My biggest um, limiting beliefs, imposter syndrome, big, like lots of limiting beliefs for sure. Like money blocks and um, I'm not worth it. I'm not deserving. I'm, who am I to, mm -hmm. you know, be making a difference in the world? Um, yeah. Lots of things that I heard not ever like specifically or towards me, but like, or maybe towards me, but you know, here and there growing up that I never, you don't really realize what you hear and take. And then it creates these limiting beliefs that when you grow up and you're like, <laughs> I'm not worthy. Why? And then, I don't know. Limiting beliefs are crazy. They're really incredible. <laughs> it's really tough to break uh, away from things that you have been told over and over again through your life, uh, whether it be by a spouse or by a significant other, family, you know, stuff like that. We all gonna get haters when we do our stuff, you know. That, that just kind of comes with the territory. But the ones that are close to us are the ones that we really believe are, that are uh, the ones that are close to us are the ones that hurt hurt us the most. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And you've always had a heart for kids. Um, so you've been teaching since 2008, and you always had this big heart for kids. It's natural for you to be into a business with, with kids. Tell us more about what you do today. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one with children where we dig into their goals, and we practice this life balance where life balance wheel i can't talk today <laughs> that's okay i'm having problems with it too and i'm supposed to be the host here you know <laughs> you're doing as well as i am so you're that's okay you, you, you're good um so life balance wheel will check into the different areas in their life like school friends family or parents um extracurricular activities and just rate them on a scale of one to ten and see where they're at and then um during those sessions, we'll talk about whatever's going on in their life um, and uh, provide them with different coping skills to help them get through whatever challenges. We all face challenges 
whether just depending on the person or the individual. Um, and yeah, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I think that coaching up kids, um, helping the next generation coming up is a, is a big, big thing with me as well. And, um, I think kids go through more challenges than they, than they tell their parents. Of course, I think that, um, kids nowadays, I think are going through more anxiety and depression. I don't really know why that is, but it does seem like it's, it's more than when I was a kid. I was a kid at one point, I think. No, <laughs> it's been a while. So, you know, you don't remember anymore. But yeah, I think it's I think it's so important to for kids to have someone to talk to that maybe it, and not, I'm not saying the parents don't do a good job. That's not what I mean. But sometimes it's easier to talk to someone else than it is to your parents because they already they already kind of got a gauge on all the negative side of you, so they are, can sometimes be really critical. And maybe you just want to talk to someone that 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 is just showing you love and not showing the uh, you know, the criticism and the, and the stuff of giving you the tools to be able to make it through what you're going through right now. Is that kind yeah. of what you do? Yeah, absolutely. And then also I work with the parents as well to open up that gate for them to, or that space to really um, separate them, you know, themselves from having those conversations and their emotions. I'm actually currently working on an emotional check-in question page for parents. So it kind of gives them just a list of ideas to emotionally check in with their child. And then um, another thing for them to emotionally check in with themselves first before emotionally checking in with their children. Oh, absolutely. Cause you don't, you can't help anybody if you can't help yourself first. I, I, I agree with that point. That's, yeah. that's difficult for me. I try to help everybody. I think it's sometimes it's a little too much for me, but I, I just don't want to be anybody else. I can't be anybody else. So it's just, it's where I'm at and it's who I am. So I just, I'm not going to stop doing it. I do, you know, like I said, but I think that's the way you are too. I think that, you know, just from what I've seen and what we've talked about, I see the heart for, for the kids, the families and, and uh, just having a kid grow up to be happy, healthy, and being able to have the opportunity to do whatever it is they want. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly it. That's my goal. Yeah. <laughs> without the blocks that we've experienced and without the stuff that all that crap that goes into our head too, you know, <laughs> it just gets to be overwhelming sometimes yep. for kids in this world. And they do need that. They need someone to talk to. They need someone that's been there. And that's, that's another thing I think people undervalue is people that have been there, that they, they've had trauma, they've had uh, things happen to them. They can be more empathetic to people that, or to children or to whomever that they're trying to work with. Yeah. So let me see. So you, you uh, had a bunch of things, a bunch of trials and tribulations that have come up in your life. How does that affect you now? And how does that help you to help other people? Um, it definitely helps me now. Just I'm just stronger and I know my self-worth which I had no idea for years, like within the past four years, maybe is when I like came to terms that I was worthy. <laughs> um, even there, I struggled a little bit, but um, I definitely had amazing people in my life that I do still have amazing people in my life, but that just like support me and um, yeah. I forgot the question. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. No. And how does that help you today? And how does it help you to help other people and do what you do? Um, just to relate to, to other people with whatever. Um, I think that a lot of people struggle with self-worth and know that they're deserving. And um, I think that we're in this, like with the internet and our phones and everything, we're very, caught up in other things and just distract ourselves from ourselves a lot. So um, I'm very big on teaching children and families and um, just to be more self-aware and check in with themselves and give themselves that space that they, that they need to really know what they want. 
You mentioned a, a, a wheel or a life wheel or something. Could you explain what that is for everybody? Because I don't know if everyone knows what that is. Yeah. The life balance wheel, it's um, just like this little circle that you draw and you break it up into different sections of different areas in your life, whatever they are. So for children, it's a little different than adults. Um, and we'll break it up into, I think it's school. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but I'm oh, going off okay. <laughs> school, parents, extracurricular activities, um, siblings. Um, I know there's more. So diff- just different topics of whatever's, you know, the or area it takes up life. that part of their life kind of thing. Yes. Yes, exactly. And then like we'll write it. And... Friends. Yes. Thank you. That's another one. Yeah. <laughs> Homework, um, which I tried not to do. So, right. oh. <laughs> Oops. so what, what is it that it does for the kids? The, the so uh, wheel. We'll rate the, that area. So say at school, um, we'll rate it on the level of happiness. They, they are with that area of their life. So with their school, um, one through 10. And then we'll check in and say, if it's a seven, what would make it a 10? And then in a month, we'll do it again and then compare and see where we're really um, improving in our life and where we, where we want to improve. And sometimes there's areas that we don't care to improve and that's okay. It's just like, they don't all have to be 10. Right. Right. It's whatever we really want to focus on and create a balance in our life. Yeah. So it's, it's so that we'll be, we'll be happier with life. Yeah. In yes. general. That's exactly. Good. That's good. Yeah. So, so oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. sorry. If they're happy, you know, if they're happy with a seven in school, then cool. And, but they want their parents to be a 10 and their parents are a nine, then that was where we would focus. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. So, What do you feel since working with the kids? What do you feel is the number one, I want to say limiting belief, but I I don't know whether the number one struggle that they seem to have. Anxiety is a big one right now for for children. Um, And that I can totally vary from each child, like what's creating the anxiety. Um, yeah. You know, it's funny because that's what I asked a couple of people on, on other shows. I said, I, I really feel like the anxiety level of our children, the next generation today is far greater than when I was growing up. And I just, I do you agree with that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think judgment because we have this, we have all these social media accounts that were posting, you know, us perfect and never us you know, the, the bad days. So we're constantly comparing ourselves or to, you know, to media and just to actors and um, Mm. athletes and just trying to be that, that perfect person. And social media too. Like if you're really happy about something, like say you post, Oh, say a new relationship or a new this or do that. And you start getting bashed for it or something on social media, that kind of hurts too. And that'll cause some, um, I don't know if it's anxiety, but it'll just ca- cause uh, someone to step back and look at themselves like, oh, well, maybe that wasn't the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Just it breaks that happy mood, you know? Yeah. And there's a yeah. lot of things like that where you post and you get a little bit, you know, get a, bit, a little bit of negative feedback and it really does affect people. Yeah. Cyberbullying is really big too, which is oh, yeah. heartbreaking. It is because it's like, it's not even necessary. And because people are behind a keyboard, it's a lot easier to tell somebody something stupid than it is, you know, to in person. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's yucky. It is. <laughs> it's an awful thing. And I'm glad that you're out there trying to help the kids through this type of thing and help, um, you know, I, it just, <clears throat> I think that our kids are going through a lot more than, than we went through. And I think that there's a lot of things that um, go through their mind. There's so many responsibilities like school and home and managing home life and parent life, which sometimes isn't good and siblings and bullies and homework and expectations and all these things that cause the stress. It's good for them to have someone out there that's in their corner. I think that's a huge 
a huge thing. Some people that have a big heart that'll, that'll go there and say, Hey, you know what? It's, you know, you have to understand what you're worth and who you are so that when people say things about you that ain't true, that you know who you are and you don't have to worry about those other things. Yeah. Yeah. So you see that as well. Yeah, I definitely do. And I, I think, um, what I like about like the one-on-one um, sessions is it's, it's either weekly or bi-weekly. So it's, it's sort of like, like therapy sessions in a way, just like the, you know, the um, constantness, like I'm not, that's not the right word, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. The consistency. Of consistency. It. Thank you. That's the word I was trying to think of. <laughs> yeah, I try to understand big words and all, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason I work with kids. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that was pretty good, guys. <laughs> uh, uh, so just having those check-ins, even when they are not bad days or, you know, to them, but just, you know, con- continuously making sure or checking in and practicing those coping skills. So when those challenges do come and they do face the challenges, um, they're prepared and they have all the tools necessary. Yes, that's that's big and that's important. And I know we were joking around a little bit, but the subject matter <laughs> is important. It really is. I just I, I we kind of goof off just a little bit though. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so you, what is what is your uh, goals coming up for 2020? I have some big goals. I. Got. I have my coloring book, which I have. I don't know if I've shared yet, but it's. Yeah, I don't think we've seen it yet. Book. Okay, you're gonna have to talk again so we can switch the screen. Oh, now. okay. <laughs> um, interactive coloring book that teaches breathing exercises. So awesome. I finally, um, it's been on Amazon since July 2018, nice. and I am at that point where I have my self-worth towards that that I'm an author (laughs) yes so I'm putting myself out there and I got into two bookstores in Arizona a couple weeks ago which was so much fun so now my goal is to get into all 50 states (laughs) because I got into one (laughs) well I'm in California too already so I got two off the list yeah two off the list (laughs) probably three we probably have that around here somewhere if it's not so cold that you can't go and see it (laughs) (laughs) we anyway michigan land of cold and snow but generally it hasn't been that bad this year but now i don't want to go into all that (laughs) you're going way off the train here so you want you you have a book out and that is really really cool so what what else are you doing you want to do the one-on-one coaching anything else coming up for you Schools. I got to go to a school last year and teach in 40 classrooms in a week. And it was such an incredible experience that I am ready to travel around and go to all different schools um, and teach mindfulness and help the teachers and the students kind of bring that into the classrooms as well. They don't teach that in school. They don't teach entrepreneurism. They don't teach... Well, anything that really helped, but <laughs> I'm just life <kidding>. skills. <laughs> I used to teach that stuff, but they felt it wasn't as necessary, I guess, anymore. I don't know. I, I, it's not that I'm against schools or teachers or anything like that. I'm not. They they only do what they're told and what they can do, and then, so that's it's not that. It's just I don't think enough gets taught to our kids that when they're ready to face the world, that they're actually ready to face the world. You know. Yeah. Do you, do you see the same thing as being a teacher? Yeah, that's um, when I was in college, I was kind of debating, do I want to get my credentials? Do I want to, and I was actually starting this business around the same time. Um, And that's why I went this route because I can still teach children, but whatever I want and what I'm passionate about. And I really feel that our mindset is huge and these life skills, coping skills and, um, mindfulness and all that good stuff is it's just so important so now now I'm able to still be a teacher and bring it into other teachers and help 
<laughs> yeah, that's really that good. That's really good. So I think that, you know, I mean, I think that like history and all that science and stuff is important. Okay. I'm not going to say it's not, but why do you, why do you think that schools don't teach this stuff? Do they think it's the parent's responsibility and that's why they don't teach it? Or, or what do you think about that? I don't know why they don't. I think standardized testing and like this, the state has a lot to do with it. Just like oh. trying to, trying to get those numbers that they're, the goal is. Okay. That makes um, sense to me. Yeah. But if I think that having these tools of mindfulness and um, I think that will help raise the grades. In a way. Yeah, I, I agree with that because people that are distracted or they're, they're depressed and they're always thinking about the problems and things like that, it, you don't really have the, uh, how do you put it, the attitude of wanting to work or wanting yeah. to put any work into anything. Yeah. So it's a detriment to the student if they're feeling depressed and, and uh, anxious and all these things because then their work their um, creativity goes down, work goes down, you know, so they, they don't score as well as they might have had they had a, a clear mind and a, um, and a positive attitude. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just, I don't know. I think we're just so distracted with our phones. And so during breaks, the kids are on their phones and checking stuff and not yet. Right. <laughs> not really paying attention to the surroundings or acting out. We'll be right back. Then, oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Had to do it. <laughs> so Annie, See, no. it's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Had to do it. Proved that. my point. You have it right in front of you. <laughs> yeah. You know, the reason I do that, I take my glasses off because of that. It's just this huge glare that, you know, and I can't see anything without them. And most of the people who listen to the show or watch the show, they know that because I always say, hey, now I'm blind. So the phone actually has numbers that are big enough for me to see what time it is. So I can kind of get an idea of how long the show's been, where we're at, those type of things. And if I have another one right away, you know, like I have three today, you know, then I can put in my mind, you know, what, what time I need to end. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> That's all that's for. It really is. Cause I can't read anything else on it. Anyway. <laughs> But it was a nice prop for what you were talking about there. Right? <laughs> for example. For example. Who's distracted um, again? I, <laughs> what were we talking about? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, I recently yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I recently read an article about um, schools bringing in meditation instead of uh, detention, which Ooh. is something I would love to get into schools, more schools. Cause I think that's, that's a good read. Like they have to check in with themselves cause they're meditating. So, yeah. Yeah. Cause, uh, and that'll cause help, I think from that, I don't yeah. think it helps having the kids right on the chalkboard. I won't stab Timmy with a pencil or whatever they did. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't think that helps anything. You know, I, I don't, yeah. I agree with you on the meditation part where can we, can we get something in there to help the kids rather than punish all the time? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. That's a good way to go. So um, I didn't know they had implemented that. I really like that idea. Where Where is that now? I don't remember. Oh, that's okay. I know We're in just... a different country, it's it's way bigger. I think oh, it's like yeah. Norway, Sweden. Oh, yeah. It's, way, it's very implemented. They're way ahead of us. Most, most yeah. other countries are in, in that respect anyway. So, all right. So let's see. Um, let me see what you have right now to offer everybody. And I'm going to let you just explain that. And the floor is yours. What do you mean exactly? <laughs> oh, just to explain whatever offers you have right now and anything that people can take advantage of the book and all that stuff and where okay. to get that, those things. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, so I have the book which is on Amazon. It's Breathe in Color. And it's on barnesandnoble.com or my website, um, which is commoncolorful.com slash book. And I have the one-on-one -on -one mentoring 
and you can find me on my website or Facebook. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Everything is at Common Colorful. Um, I have a free text message service for weekly mindfulness tips. If you text oh. mindful to 474747, that's a fun one. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to put that, we're trying to put all that in the show, uh, the notes down below in the description. So you should be able to see links to stuff right now. If you're interested in picking these things up to help your child or you're interested in, in meeting Jessica to go ahead and uh, schedule something, then we'll have that right below in the show notes. Perfect. Thank you very much. So is there anything you want to tell the everybody out there before you go? Pause and breathe. That's amazing. <laughs> That's good. That's really good. It was so good to have you on today and I really appreciate you and thank you for spending the time with us today. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. This was very fun. It was fun. <laughs> All right. <laughs> everybody out there, click the subscribe and the little bell thing that's right by there. Thanks. And uh, have a great day.